Hello sixth grade. Welcome to week two of uh, e-learning. I hope week one went well for you guys. I think we're finally kind of starting to settle into things and get used to how this is going to be. I know it's a little bit less crazy than last week was, of course. All right, today what we're going to do is talk about some more elements of nonfiction. Now we did this a little bit last time, but today we're talking about POV, tone, and organization. So right away, let's figure out what POV stands for. All right, what is the POV? POV is just an acronym for point of view. Now, we talk about this a lot in fiction, where you'll say, okay, the point of view is first person or third person. Another word for that is perspective. But in nonfiction, we usually don't really worry about, you know, first person, third person, because all the stories are true, and they're generally told, uh, well, from, I'd say, first person. But um, when we are talking about nonfiction, when we say point of view, we're just using that for as another word for opinion. So opinion is the same sort of thing as point of view. We can figure out an author's point of view on a topic by reading their work, looking at their words, and trying to figure out what their sort of attitude is about the uh, subject that they're writing about. All right, let's do a, uh, a little example. So, this reads, I was only three when I first smelled the fresh, damp soil of Grandma's garden. Somewhere inside me, a seed of love sprouted and began to grow. Okay, so let's take a look at the words that the author chose to put in here. When I was only three, or I was only three when I first smelled the fresh. Okay, now fresh is a word with a positive connotation, which is a fancy way of saying it's a good word that makes us feel good. Damp. Um, I'd say that could be a positive word when you think about the other words that were, that it could have been. It could have been like soggy or wet or moist, but damp feels a lot better. Soil could have been dirt or mud, but also it feels a lot better than those two. And so I'd say these three are pr pretty positive words. Grandma's garden, I'd say usually grandmas are seen as a pretty good sort of uh, person in somebody's life. And so I'd say for this first sentence, we're feeling pretty good about gardening. Somewhere inside of me, a seed of love, love is pretty good as well, sprouted and began to grow. Okay, so what does the author think about garden, gardening? What is their point of view slash opinion about gardening? I'd say it's probably pretty good. They're probably a fan. So we were able to tell that from looking at the words that the author chose to use. All right, let's move on. Let's do a little bit of practice. So take a look at this sentence. I took one look at the looming, teetering boat in the dark black water and decided that ocean life was not for me. So I would like you to answer an Ed puzzle. What does the author think about sailing? Now take a look at these words, looming, teetering, dark, black water, what kind of sense do you get from the author about how they feel about sailing? All right, let's do another one. No matter how you feel about it, you cannot deny that music is a language everyone can understand. It connects us even when we are broken apart. Now, this one's, I have to admit, it's kind of a tricky one. I would say, do not worry too much about this first sentence because what the author is doing here is, at least in their mind, stating a fact. No matter how you feel about it, you can't deny music is a language everyone understands. So they feel like this, this portion of the sentence right here about language or music being the language everyone gets, they feel like that's a fact. And so we're not going to worry too much about that. Instead, we're going to worry about this second sentence. It connects us even when we are broken apart. Connection even when people are broken. Does that feel like a good or a bad thing to you? Go ahead and tell me. What does the author think about music? Do they see it as a good thing or a bad thing? Go ahead and write your answer in Ed Puzzle. All right, we're going to talk about tone next. So, tone can mean something different when referring to talking and referring to writing. So let's talk about talking first. 
tone refers to how someone's voice sounds. By listening to someone's tone of voice, you can tell how they feel. We do this all the time. If someone sounds angry, that means they have an angry tone. If someone sounds happy, that means they have a happy tone. It's not too difficult, usually, to read someone's emotions if they have a really strong tone of voice. Okay, now writing. Tone refers to the word choice and the point of view an author takes on a subject. Remember, when we're reading writing, we can't hear it out loud, so we're not really sure what the tone of voice is. But the sort of second, second best thing we can do there is look at the words they chose and try to figure out their opinion that they're trying to get across. By paying attention to an author's tone, you can tell how they feel as well. All right. So here's some examples. By the way, we often describe a tone with an emotion word, like uh, happy or sad or angry, cheerful or hopeful. These are all words you could use to describe someone's tone in their writing, as well, I guess, as someone's tone of voice, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. For example, let's imagine a dad says, we are going on vacation this summer, and the son says, that's awesome. Now, you guys get the benefit of hearing my voice, and you could probably tell that the tone of voice here is happy, at least from the son. The dad, I mean, we can probably guess the dad's happy too. He's got an exclamation mark, and we know that vacation is usually a good thing. But the son, he says awesome, and he's got three exclamation points. So from everything we can tell here, the son seems very happy. Now that might seem pretty obvious, but taking a look at these words can be important for when things get a little more complex. Let's take a look at this one. The dad says, we can't go on vacation this summer, and the son says, amazing, that's just what I was hoping for, dad. Now, when the dad says, can't go on vacation, we know that that is not usually seen as a good thing. It might be a little confusing then as to why the son responds with all these positive words. He says, amazing, that's just what I was hoping for, he has an exclamation point. But we could also, we, we have to realize that the son is probably going to react in the way a normal person would. And so this amazing, that's just what I was hoping for, dad, is probably sarcasm and anger. I could pretty easily imagine the son rolling his eyes at his dad. So this one's a little bit more complex, but it shows us the importance of taking a look at all of the different things that might affect each uh, person's response. Okay, we're going to move on from this one. Tones can also be formal or informal. Now, formal is a word that means proper, fancy, and professional. Informal, in is a prefix that makes means the opposite of whatever word comes after it. So the opposite of formal would be casual, improper, and unprofessional. When you are, well, I like to think of it like this. Imagine that you were speaking to the Queen of England. You would speak in a formal tone, proper fancy professional. If you're speaking to your best friend, you're speaking in an informal tone of voice, casual, improper, unprofessional. Not necessarily bad, but you're just not gonna use quite as uh, sophisticated language. So like this sentence right here, Hey, throw me that burger. Now, could you say this to the Queen of England without being embarrassed, slash, without having her be very disappointed in you? The answer is no, so this sentence is informal, right? This sentence is very casual. Pardon me, would you please pass me that hamburger? This is a sentence I feel like I could maybe say to the Queen. Uh, and so I could say the sentence is formal. Okay, so let's move on and do some practice. Number one, the old man took the handful of dust from his farm and sniffed it with great pleasure. Is this sentence happy or sad? Take a look at the words. I would take a look especially at these last two words. Does this make you feel happy or sad? His stinking breath kept listeners at a considerable distance from him. 
Now this author is writing something about someone else. So is the author being polite in their tone or rude in their tone? His stinking breath. Really think about that. The negotiations between the two states came to a halt after terms of reference could not be agreed upon. Okay, so now we're moving into the formal or informal question. Does this have a lot of fancy words or not a lot of fancy words? Could you say something like this in the presence of the Queen of England and not be embarrassed? Or would you be embarrassed? Think about that and then decide if it's formal or if it's informal. Remember. The queen likes formal. 